when you're doing i'm doing this long-term project around null in bristol um okay suburb of bristol um sort of 1930s to 1960s council housing um it's quite a di distinctive sort of area of bristol and i'm you know going up there most days taking photographs trying to capture this you know the feelings i've got about this place when you were doing a state did you go in with a specific narrative in mind or did that sort of emerge over the course of making the work and making the images what what's interesting in your question is what you just said mm. when when you go there with the feelings you have um being um, practicing social documentary that's pretty critical and it, and it links into why do we have these feelings well we're, we're probably motivated by maybe one reason or several reasons that are quite powerful within us yeah for me so specifically 30 years ago when i shot a state um I, I, to answer your question simply no i did not have a preconceived narrative at all yeah I, I was going in there to explore and find out however i had a sort of i had sort of several specific motivations uh, and what they were were I, I was fascinated by documentary photography that that that's the thing which i enjoy the most so I wanted to try and practice that myself. I, I, I was quite young or quite, you know, new to um, doing things seriously. And also I'm from a working class background and um, I, want, I was going somewhere where I didn't know, but I didn't want to be intrusive. And, and actually what motivated me was a sense of injustice, my sense of social fair play, social, my... Um, my relationship to inequality in Britain <clears throat> was already quite strong. And I wanted to sort of show to an audience what a working class existence, what a working class environment is like. Yep. So I had those motivations. Um, and, and interestingly, back then, it, it, obviously before digital, before the internet, Really, the only way people saw different places or learned about different places was a TV documentary or picking up a book and, and looking at pictures and reading about it. So a lot of places were not easily accessible or easy to view. And um, really, I, I wanted to try and creatively produce a body of work that held the viewer's eye was was intrinsically interesting anyway because it was creative photography. Yeah. But the subject matter was something quite prosaic, everyday, ordinary. Ordinary that is to probably the working class, but not necessarily the lower middle class, the middle classes. Some of that struck a chord. I'm just trying to think. Well, um, I guess so. This estate, Noel, is a large planned estate, and it is one yeah. Of it's it's um you know a, a fairly sort of low income kind of area and there's a real sense of like you know being left behind or whatever but yeah. i think like my approach at the moment which is still a bit like you were saying i'm sort of going there and making the images and seeing like how i respond to the place but yeah it reminds me very much of the place um the housing estate that i grew up on in in the yeah. in the 80s and the 90s and yeah i think the way I'm approaching is perhaps a little bit less sort of like political than than what you were saying. I think it's more yeah. my sort of personal feelings. Like this is a um, sort of growing up on the periphery. Mm -hmm. I grew up on a council estate mm -hmm. in 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 the countryside. So and you know uh, yeah, sort of between Manchester and Liverpool and, and Birmingham. And so you know you, you go to these places and it always felt like something was happening there. And then you come back to yeah. where where I lived and. It felt sort of removed from all of that. And again, Knoll, although it's not that far from Bristol City Centre, it's got this mm. real feeling of like being sort of separated and like I said, almost like left behind. Like there hasn't been yeah. much investment and there's there's not much to do there. There's not much work around there. And there's a feeling that it's been kind of overlooked in favour of other sort of areas of Bristol. And I think, like I said, that's but those are sort of personal feelings that I'm bringing to it rather than necessarily like a but um I think one thing I'm just trying to uh, trying to avoid 
is I, I know what you were saying about like people didn't see those kinds of uh, places perhaps in the 80s or whatever. Yeah. These yeah. are kind of saturated with those kind of images. Yeah. I'm trying to avoid doing the, 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 I think I see it quite a lot these days, you know, the sort of um, photographs of like perhaps more deprived areas where, it, you know, they, you know, there's a, a picture of some graffiti or a picture of some broken windows or a picture of like, you know, an empty shopping oh. trolley in the playground, oh. or whatever. I'm trying to avoid those kinds of images because I don't think that gives necessarily an accurate picture of, of yeah. what the area is like. So um, I think, and that kind of leads me on to the next question, which is that I've been making a lot of images of the place and my personal response to the place, but I haven't really photographed any people yet. And I find that quite difficult because, you know, people, when they see you with a camera these days, you know, they're kind of like, oh, what's this, what's going on here? You know, they, they think you, you know, mm. the newspaper or you're from the council and you're checking up on people or whatever. And, and yeah. I think there's a, there's a wariness around that and it can be difficult to, break that down i'm not a fan of just photographing people walking past or whatever because i you know people don't like it and it feels disrespectful um mm. so i i want to make a connection with people if i'm going to take their photograph but i think like it, it can be a bit difficult to make that connection and i was like looking again at a state there's some really mm. beautiful photographs in there some of them are sort of more portrait style with someone sitting in their mm. flat or the like the young kid on the bike and then there's the more spontaneous ones with like the young mums in the playground and stuff like that and I was just yeah like, oh, you approached people with a camera yeah. and sort of said you know cool. how you got that connection yeah okay there's a lot there just before I go on to photographing people and answering that yeah. question just coming back to what you were talking about as like sort of what I like about your work and what I'm seeing coming through is your photograph in the aesthetic of the of a place where you exist or you're part of, mm. which may go unnoticed, but you're noticing it. Your photographer is spotting these things, and I think you don't need you don't necessarily need a political agenda. I mean, all things eventually can be yeah. maybe interpreted as political some way or the other, but you don't need that um, explicitly. And I commend that. I think you go with your emotion and, and, and these, these scenes that you convey are about somebody's existence and how they interact with the built world and the natural world, the environment. So I think that's a great instinct to, to use. And I think that will serve you well. <clears throat> with, with, with a state, I, I, you probably noticed that there's a fair amount of pictures without people, obviously. And, yeah. I, and I was doing that. I was doing shots of doorways, windows. This sort of architecture, this brick and this these windows and this modernism was something I grew up with. Right. And it was sort of integral to my childhood and my perception of the world. Um, and this was the environment that I was born into, like a modernist 60s environment, which actually nurtured my childhood and my understanding of what the world was about. So, so I think that angle of approach is excellent and, and it can take you in many directions, but it's also honest, you're being honest with yourself. Coming to the people question is a good one because um, it's always been tricky, I think, throughout photography history. And um, I think access and the ability to, to produce good portraiture, whether candid or um, interactive, always requires work, skill and talent. Um, in terms of in like documentary, what the thing is with the state, um, I, I was a big fan of Cartier-Bresson and I, I really believed in the decisive moments. Um, I mean, I think it's a little bit less fashionable in the last the recent years, but the, the strength of that, I thought, was if you could become relatively invisible and portray a scene without um, affecting it, you were doing genuine documentary. Yeah. However, that was not, I didn't want to do literal street photography and not interact and not be part of. I, I, I wanted to sort of combine both. So when I was in a situation where I was, when the subject or subjects obviously knew I was there with a camera, how did I get that? Now, in order to be in that position, what I did was I spent time on the estate. The classic, you put the legwork in. Yeah. For, if you look at the picture you mentioned where I'm on like a little play park and there's mums and that's quite intimate. Mm. 
Yeah. I, I got chatting with one of the mums and um, they used to be there quite often. And um, so they sort of accepted me and I sort of spoke the same language. I, I was a working class lad. Yeah. I just started chatting about the kids in the park. And I said, I was doing a photography project and my camera was down there. I wasn't taking pictures. And she's sort of, yeah, he's all right. Like, oh, he's doing some photography, you know, that you get this endorsement and this acceptance. Yeah. So then they go back to chatting about the cost of living fags, what the kids are doing. And I'm sat there observing. And then I sort of get my camera ready a little bit and then I take a shot. And it's almost like they don't know I'm doing it, but they've accepted me and they're chatting to me and it's OK. Interestingly, just from a technical point of view, I shot um, a state all on a Mamiya 645 with a waist level finder. Right. I, I'm not sure if you're aware of that type of camera or not. Uh, yeah, I've used a, a medium format with a waist with a waist. Yeah. I generally yeah. use it all, but yeah, I have used one before. Yeah, so I, I, I recall sitting sometimes in locations, just like on the bench in a gutter, like on the curb, and just having that camera on my lap and in that group, that's what I think I did. So I wasn't, they didn't, I wasn't doing that to sort of tell them I was going to photograph them. So I managed to be like um, friendly and be part of that group and also try and catch something quite candid. Um, and then there is the other way of literally just being honest and straightforward with people having the confidence to walk up to somebody and say i'm photographing this area i'm really interested in you and what you're doing now um and, and just start the conversation yeah whether it ends up with a photograph or not is um you it depends what techniques you use um, there are great, a, a couple of people who spring to mind at the moment are very different, but photograph people a lot are Jim Mottram and Niall McNamara, who does street photography. It, 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 and I think once you get into the um, habit of being confident to walk up to people and being quite direct, it, it becomes easier. It gets easier. Right. And um, I think if you're spending time in Noel, which you are doing, you're going to end up chatting with people, et cetera. A lot of people may say, no, I don't want to be photographed. You, you could, you, and sometimes you have to accept that, but you'd be surprised sometimes is, I, if you say something, kind of whatever you, you what situation you say, I'd really like to take your portrait in this area at some point. We could do it today or another day. And um, some people, yeah, all right, then, yeah, no problem. Yeah, go ahead. And, and it's like that. Um, but of course you are, you are part of the situation there, you're influencing it. So you have to consider that in terms of what you're trying to convey. Yeah, yeah. The, the, it's, 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 it, it, I think um, photographing people is one of those areas where one could talk for hours on, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think like, it's just that I'm, I'm, um, I have tried that approach sort of asking people, perhaps not that much. And, you know, most people have knocked me back. So perhaps I, that's just something right. I just practice and just, um do a bit more i think like i said i'm just i'm just conscious that when i'm walking around with my camera you know people you know do see you and stuff like that and i think like it instantly there's like i said it's the partly i think it's the day and age that we live in you know that yeah. like, people are used to you know or they're they're used to the idea that people might be you know you might be filmed while you walk down the street you know and stuff like that and yeah. i think you know, there's all kinds of nefarious reasons for that like i said like yeah. council or whatever and so I think people see the camera and they get a bit, you know, sort of like the, the barriers go up. But I'm also, yeah. I think like I'm just, when I, when I do photograph people, I want to, I want to photograph them respectfully and sort of, you know, as they want to be seen. And I think like, you know, I see a lot of street photography as it is on Instagram, where I think like, mm. you know, people have done these candid shots of people in the street and they're, they're done in such a way that, that, you know, the, the viewer is being asked to sort of, almost to, to um, you know, make a judgment about that person or to, you know, and, and I, I don't like that because, you know, yeah. that's not how I'd want to be seen. So, um, yeah, I'm really conscious of that kind of thing. Um, and I think like when I have done um, portraiture and candid portraiture, um, one long series I did was um, regulars in my local pub. 
but that was done yeah. over months. And of course, you know, they all know me there. And, and again, everyone got used to me having the camera and, and just, you know, I'd see something and think, oh, that's going to make, you know, quickly do that and then just yeah. have a conversation. And so that sort of built up over time with that relationship. And I think it's, yeah. more, uh, you know, perhaps when you bump into someone in the street and you think like, this person looks really interesting, uh, but you've only got like, you know, 30 seconds or a minute to sort of sort of bring them around to the idea. So yeah, I think like I said, it can might I, can be- I, can I, can I just respond to that? Because um, yeah, yeah. the I, I've done a follow-up series called Estate Return, which is on my website. Right, okay. And um, I, so um, I got commissioned by an organization in the West Midlands called Multistory on the strength of estate to return to the same estate like 25 years later. So I'm on the same estate. Um, it's changed, um, but I'm shooting with a, excuse me, 5D Mark III or, or four. I can't remember. I'm shooting with a digital camera SLR, so it's different. Yeah. I, I don't really, I can't really afford, well, I could afford film, but I'm not, <laughs> you yeah. know, it, that's that, that's what was available then. I'm using the tool which is available today. So it's a slightly different tool, but I was very, very, um, I, I'm 25 years more experienced. And, and I spent a lot of time walking around that estate and a lot of time walking. Um, if I saw somebody, I was straight in there saying, hi, I hope you don't mind. We're just taking some pictures around here. I was here like 20 years ago and um, I'm doing a new project. And being there 20 years ago was a bit of an opener because I'd say about one in four people might have been aware of my work, but not everyone. Mm. But I, I was just like, like that. It was just like friendly, disarming, uh, do you mind? And I would say about 50% of people at least said, yeah, no problem. And then I could photograph them anyway. Uh, they would, when you do do that, quite often people are going from A to B and you know, they're on the way. So that you may not have a, you know, develop a relationship. Yeah. Alternatively, something I did at the beginning in, in a state and I did in a state return was I did a little flyer. So because it was a housing estate, I decided to flyer say maybe um, 50 or 60 um, houses or flats randomly yeah. saying who I was, what I was doing, a little bit about me. i would be knocking your door next, next week on a Saturday. Is there any chance I can say hello and maybe have photograph you? So I did it randomly like that. And then I, you know, you get knocked back quite a lot, but I ended up with three or four great portraits inside somebody's house. And, and when, when, when they said, I'll oh, come in, I said, oh, well, I'll just get me a quick like camera ready. And I prolonged that. And I, they, I sat down and I'm looking around. I start a conversation. Oh, that, that's a nice picture. Is that your daughter or something like that? Before you know it, you're just chatting away and, and that. And then you, you, they're generally, you're, they're put in your hands, so to speak, in the sense that, people are you know they they feel at ease with you and 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 they know you're not a threat and you know you seem like a decent guy and uh, which you're not because you, you I know when I'm in that situation I'm coming from a very genuine position that I want to portray these people fairly right. and, and 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 uh, and I'm I'm producing like a tableau a set of images about a place that I care about yeah, uh, and that's not to say I'm not going to be. Um, I, I try and stay relatively objective because I'm trying to show aspects of our modern society as they are. Yeah, because the work you're doing and the work I do will be really important in years to come. Not not for the sense of saying, oh, how has it changed necessarily, but like a real window into what society was like, uh, like elements like <clears throat> people's artifacts, people's dress sense people's well-being all of this yeah is important to convey and it comes back to your original sort of motivation in a way of trying to get across this sense of place that you're got a, a, an attachment to yeah yeah I think that's um yeah no that's, that's something I've been thinking about a lot is like that kind of sense of place and how do we respond to landscapes but not sort of necessarily you know landscape in the traditional sense but actually the, yes you know the the, the the place in which we find ourselves you know like whether yeah. that's city or you know um and um so yeah i think and yeah it, it's been a really interesting place to to visit noel and it's not something i knew i've lived in bristol for five years now and it's not somewhere yeah. that I before i started doing this so i was just mm. thinking, well like you said the flyering idea sounds really i mean i do 
quite often give people a business card so that they can have a look at my website and see that you yeah know, genuine and stuff like that but um the flyering sounds interesting at yeah the, the what we what we've got up in Knoll is the 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 shop unit um so um myself and then uh tom's been doing portraits sort of studio style portraits in there and putting those on. oh okay i've been putting you know my photographs of the place up and stuff like that and i think like because right. got that space where people can come into i think like perhaps i should you know sort of emphasize that when i'm talking to people say like you know if i you know you know I'll, I'll take this picture of you now and then if you come into the shop in a week or so it'll be on the wall or you know or you can have a look yeah. at it before i put it up and see if you like it and if you know if you're happy with it then i'll put it up but you know and then yeah you know get people to engage with the with the work that way as well it depends what you're what are what are you trying to achieve in terms of the portraiture because i've seen some of your work hmm. are you trying to show their environment away from the unit you've got are you trying to show them in the in the landscape or yeah, are, exactly. is that what yeah. you are trying to do that yeah so i, I mean the flyer idea has worked for me it, it it doesn't have a huge success rate but the success rate has normally ends up with great you know quality because people have taken a decision oh he's a photographer yeah. he's doing a project i'm gonna help him out he sounds all right you know that it's breaking down those barriers yeah yeah i mean i <laughs> with a state i remember going in sometimes because you've got to remember it's quite and even the more recent time, I got chatting to one man and his partner, a married couple, and he, he was born on the estate. And he we were in the tower block and he's looking down. Yeah, my mum's house is there. She's still alive. And and it, I, I think I was there an hour and a half, two hours chatting. And um, I did two or three, three or four different portraits quite quickly. And in between just chatting because he was just he wanted to tell me everything about the estate. Yeah. And the moments like that are really wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And then other moments in more recently, I've just, I mean, young people. Um, sometimes you feel almost as if like adolescents, late teens, were some, maybe some of the hardest to approach. Mm. And I found they were some of the easiest when you just, that initial thing, when you go, oh, excuse me, I'm just taking some pictures. It's like, and then you you have a couple of sentences that disarm the situation very quickly, and then you have a but. Can I take? It would be all right if I take your picture. And so often, young people are like, "Yeah, all right, mate. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, it's really lovely." And then you can have a chat and you can ask them a bit. And I feel really old now because I sort of really empathise with them. I'm thinking when I was a teenager, <laughs> but they're looking at some fifty year old bloke thinking, "Oh God, you know." But <laughs> it's quite funny. I've definitely had a few teenage boys come up to me and like you know in that way that they they I think they come across as quite aggressive even when they're not you know and they'll come up to you and yeah. say oh, what are you taking well, you have to you have to to defend yeah. yourself yeah, in those yeah. environments you have to come across as if you can hold yourself yeah I've definitely had a couple where they've come up to me and said oh what are you taking pictures of and then you'll say like I'm just taking pictures because I like this area or whatever and then yeah you'll see this thing like there's they they obviously yes. come to a decision. They go, oh, well, do you want to take my picture then? And you know, yeah, I've, yeah. I've had that a few times with young yeah. people, and I definitely I've never had that with you know people you know in their thirties or whatever you know older people, yeah, Always yeah, people of like um, teenage boys or whatever you know. I think take that opportunity because when people do do that, they probably have a sense of how they want to be, and then you could probably afterwards say, okay, we've done that shot. Do you mind doing a couple more? Do you mind if I ask you if you stand there? There might be there might be an angle that you prefer. Sometimes I think when we have an opportunity like that, we're, we're very quick. We think, oh, God, they've given me a chance. Aren't I lucky? And uh, you take a picture and you may not use it. I think you have to slow down the process and they've engaged with you and use that yeah. moment the best you can. And uh, you know what it's like as a photographer. We're, we're looking at the weather conditions. We're trying to work out the composition, make sure the camera's set and keep talking. It's, 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 it's intense. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. yeah. I I was doing a um, portrait session yesterday and, you know, it was outdoors. Um, it was a newspaper commission and it was outdoors. It was raining. Uh, I needed to get the pictures really quickly so I could get them over to the, you know, the newspaper straight away. And, you know, yeah. and, and trying to talk to the person while, like I said, I was using a manual focus lens. So I was there like, you know, trying to trying to focus that and also conscious yeah. that we're, we're stood in the rain, you know, so, um, <laughs> but yeah, it went all right. But yeah, I think it's, I, that's one of the things I really enjoy about, photography i think is that that 
sometimes when when everything's sort of coming together mm. you know exactly what you want to photograph and mm. whether it's a person or a scene and like the lights just right and you're just trying to do everything you know trying to set, make sure the settings are right the lights change yeah. like that but just that that few moments of like total absorption and concentration in what you're doing and then at the end of it you it, sometimes even before looking at the images you know like one of these is actually going to be really really good yeah yeah it's very satisfying all that hard work and sometimes yeah when you're in these environments you feel a bit alien even though you've got the best intentions and you've traped these streets over and over you almost you are an outsider still and you are doing something which is a little bit out of the ordinary for sure so when you have those moments they're they're reassuring they they're endorsing sort of what you do and you need you need a few little successes to a day traipsing around to make you feel yes it was hard work but I got that picture of that lovely lady or, or those two young people and and, and it keeps you going because this type of work can be a bit demoralizing sometimes. So I remember like I might have gone to a state and come away with like shot three or four frames and thought, oh God, I'm... and it makes you think, am, am I really doing the right thing? Um, Because I remember when I was young and did a state the first time, you're learning, you know, I, I, and, mm. and um, you, sometimes you think to yourself, you know, you're doing the right thing, but sometimes it's like, am I? It's like, I'm photographing somewhere which looks a bit crap. Um, it's not really aspirational. Do people mm. really want to see this? And you start to question it. And then amazing. And to be honest, my original estate work was exhibited in the West Midlands in three venues. And, and it got a bit of a claim. It was before webs and internet. So I didn't websites and that. And then basically I used a few shots in my um, portfolio to take around to picture editors and that in London and then trying to get work. And then over time, those pictures came out of my portfolio as I had different work and everything got stored away, like under the bed, so to speak. But when it came out like 20 years later, people, I mean, as you, as you know, you've seen the work. It, yeah, it, yeah. it, it, it touched, it, people really related to it and it, it, it generated a lot of interest. I think I can see from your portfolio and the work you're doing, I, I can see the quality of your work in the sense you've got an eye that's very observant and your juxtapositions and, you know, your choice of images, composition, you know, there's a lot going for it, definitely. And, you know, I think you've got to pursue this work. Mm. Where, where are you from, actually? Where, whereabouts is it where you grew up? Uh, Shropshire, just on the border with Wales, so um, just... Um, what's the, do, what's do the place you know, called? No, um, Oswestry. Oswestry, yeah. I, I, I think I've been there. I'm aware of Oswestry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sort of, it's in between Shrewsbury and Wrexham, basically. Yeah, but I'm from Worcester originally. All oh, right, so similar sort of... Like, and, what, watches, so. and what's quite interesting about what you said, what we mm. what's similar to us, is that... I grew up on a council estate on the edge of Worcester where the countryside wasn't that too far. It was the edge of the city. Right, yeah. And Oswestry is a small, I mean, it's a town, isn't it? And it's probably yeah, yeah. got a few estates dotted around the edges. It's interesting how, <laughs> I think for me, that was an important thing. I went to school, my primary school was like a 60s built school on a big 60s yeah. council estate. And when I photographed a state, I felt that I was just visiting another estate like where I grew up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's I mean, the, I, I grew up in a village just outside Oswestry, Street, but it was, again, so sort of post-war council estate that my grandparents had moved in there um, yeah. as soon as it was built, you know, and um, it was, um, yeah, Noel is, I mean, it's 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 in the city and it's it's a much larger estate, but the basic sort of feeling that I get from it is very similar. The the type of housing is very similar. The layout of the streets is very similar, and the types of people I see, it feels like these are you know like the same sort of people I saw every day. Yeah, but I think I think it may be um, something to maybe think about mm. your your own journey in life, where you're from you know it is influencing what you're doing yeah definitely you know you know, you know that anyway but mm -hmm. perhaps it's influencing it more than 
maybe you've given it thought for, I don't know, because we, we've just, we've come to a point here where you and I have identified something similar in our background mm -hmm. and our route to continue to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I think like definitely there is, there is a, um, um, some sort of personal response, you know, to, to the place yeah. and, and that is informing the photographs. And I think sometimes for me, um, and perhaps for you as well, it's, I don't even, um, notice that resonance until I look back at the images later on, you know, I just, mm. have, sometimes have a feeling like I want to photograph this, but I'm not sure why. And then later yeah. on, looking back to the photographs, I think, oh, actually I can see what that was, what the feeling was there that, that provoked that. Or, well, yeah, well, like um, what Jonathan Mead says in the essay to estate, well, it, it's neither like um, a chocolate box lovely, and it's it's neither, neither the worst of a sink estate when he's referring to estate. Yeah. It was that in between, that balance. Yeah. In fact, there were some pictures which things looked pleasant, and there was the worst pictures. Things looked, um, you know, torn, rough around the edges. Mm. But it was that balance, and um, I wasn't out to do. The agenda for me was to show that balance, and and for me, my childhood was idyllic in a way. Yeah. But when I look back now with experience I look at a world I grew up in which was pretty tough and had some quite unpleasant experiences and it was hard and um but so I, I wasn't trying to convey anything and and I think you carry this on in your life uh, and as a photographer uh, as an artist these influences these gut influences inform what you do in your work yeah and, and I think as long as you're motivated to show, we're showing places and we're showing experiences and we're showing environments. And there's a big chunk of us in these. And why are we doing it? We're probably doing it because we're saying, this is important. This is, this is an existence which the majority of us are in and it needs to be shown, it needs to be mm. seen. And then you can, people can bring in all their different stories. The amount of stories, you know what photography is like. I've got my idea what a state's about, but I'm amazed how continually people view it and tell me what it means to them and the stories they bring to the image. Yeah. And, and it's from, ultimately, I come back to my original point. It's from photographing what would be seen as relatively mundane, everyday experiences. Yeah. A, a slightly rundown shopping centre, but serves a purpose, social function, yeah, yeah. where where lovely people interact, and you know, and maybe you know, everybody all strand site interact, um, an entrance to a, a block of flats, you know, these things. When I photographed entrances, say, to flats in um, the estate, both in 1919 and 2017, I was aware it was ordinary. But I was already, I was photographed in 1960s typography, a 1960s building that's still intact. So subtly, although it was a picture of design and architecture, I was making, a, I'm, I'm subtly making a statement that in the 60s, good quality council, affordable um, social rent oh. was provided still. And yeah. I'm photographing it today because even that is an act of, um, is an act of it's a political act in a way because that is the model that has been abandoned by our country yeah now yeah. a lot a lot of people may not see that in the work you do i do but by us portraying it it's there yeah. all the processes behind it are there whether we're being explicit about them or not and i think that's what documentary photography does it allows people a window into a world and they interpret it their way we can subtly guide them if we want to. Yeah, I think that that kind of ties in. I know I said right at the beginning that I'm not sort of approaching it with, a, you know, an explicitly political kind of um, viewpoint. Sure. But obviously, like you said, you've got all of these feelings about like this type of housing and like, you know, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm with you. I think that like, you know, good quality council housing, you know, the post-war sort of stuff was like that was a real transformation for a lot of people in this country and it was you know it's sorely needed now and I think like so those kind of assumptions are there implicitly even if I'm not like sort of explicitly kind of but I yes I, I don't always I mean sometimes I do but a lot of the time I don't really like where um art 
you know, whether photography, films, whatever, or books, you know, that bashes you over the head with the author's opinion. You know, I want to, you know, yeah. you know I, I like it more when, when the author or the artist sort of shows you a point of view and, you know, sort of gently kind of like guides you towards, you know, the, the, what they're thinking about it or feeling about it. I don't, you know, yeah. it's overtly kind of, um, political or, 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 or showing a particular viewpoint I find often it's, it's a bit you know um, didactic or yeah. it's not yeah yeah but that's I think well, I think I think, I think that's what I tried to achieve equally in estate mm. yeah. I wasn't yeah. doing that I was saying first and foremost I'm going to show the environment and the people the best I can as honestly as I can and we'll see what comes out the other end yeah and, and it's amazing because comments I've had like they range from oh that looks like you know, it's a bit tough, but looks like there's a sense of community there. It looks like a good place. Yeah. And then like you go, oh, what a horrible, disgusting place to be. It's like, it, it, so it will, it so will resonate in all different ways yeah. and you can never control that. And I think if you, as the photographer, put your, you're putting your interpretation on a place and you do it the best you can. And if you're trying to be as honest and, and balanced then you, you don't bring an overt political agenda at all yeah 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 because that's the freedom of doing your own personal work you're 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 free to interpret without pressure from anybody else but i think you sort of it's it's always important to question what motivates us yeah uh, particularly with so social documentary because yeah. we are we go in into other people's lives and worlds so there's a huge responsibility in how we how we approach it and how we interpret it look one last point i wanted to make and this is just more of a technical one but just looking through yeah, sure. um, um um a state um before we had this conversation i was just looking at like I was really enjoying the sequencing, the the sense of like it was almost like a kind of like a movie camera kind of movie because you start with like the the long shots of the estate and yeah. then come into the building down to the human scale and then into yeah into people's flats and then you get like these really nice portraits of people in their flats and I, like I said I love that sense of like the, the almost like you know like the, the drone shot that they do these days you know the long shot coming down and then yeah it felt very much you know like there was like a real sense of kind of narrative and framing in that in that yeah in the first half of the book there yeah well um when i came to sequence the book uh i, I didn't shoot it with that in mind yeah but yeah. when i but when i was photographing it what i did have in mind i, I was learning about photography uh, um and um in a way there was it's not a commercial it's not a commercially minded thing it's an editorial minded thing yeah when, yeah. when i was learning photography and when i was doing my degree i, I was taught like well if you're going to photograph a project try different angles try a long shot try a wide shot so, yeah just the basic stuff really really yeah. basic but when you're at the start of your career that's what i did i thought well to, to gain interest we need some setting shots we need some right close up and we need things in between and when i was looking at the images i had to piece together for the book I realized I I just chose a sequence I thought I'd, I'd come in and visit and get really intimate then I'd move out and say goodbye yeah so yeah. Uh, so yeah you're right to pick up on that so that was just I think when you're creating a photo book that's another step in the process sequencing and how do I do it and I, I just, that was a creative vehicle to do it. And I think it's worked quite well because several people have noted that they've yeah. enjoyed that process. And um, coming to your work, when you've maybe get to the point where you feel that you've shot enough at Knoll to then disseminate the work, whichever way you want to do. And that'll be part of the pleasure of <clears throat> working on that. Are you planning a book, perhaps, or hopefully, yeah. Um, like I said, I've got this space in the in the shopping centre to to exhibit, the, and that's more sort of work in progress at the moment. So I'm sort of changing yeah. stuff around, changing the you know, there's not necessarily sort of sequenced or whatever. It's just kind of like the images that I'm enjoying at the moment. But I think yeah, um, at some point I'll do perhaps a a, a more kind of focused, sequenced kind of like exhibition of, of the prints and stuff and then yeah. 
once once the project's wrapped up, I think then I'll think about like doing doing um, a, a book of some sort. Yeah. It'd be great. Is, is, the, is the project funded or are you funding it yourself? Um, so Haifa are just providing us with the space. But, um, oh, right. That's but, right. Yeah. But that's, yeah. Um, but I, I just uh, I did get some funding from the Arts Council, but that's um, not specifically for this project. That's just for um, just sort of all of the stuff that I'm doing at the moment. So um, oh, right, well done. That's yeah, but, not, that's always an yeah, achievement to get some arts council money. So well done. Yeah, I was really pleased. It was the first time I've, I've gone for anything like that. So I was pleased to get yeah. that. Um, but so that's I've got a couple of other sort of personal projects that I'm working on as well. So that's helping with those as well. But um, um, and do you do you work? Sorry, so do you work professionally as well? You mentioned you do stuff for local press. Was that right? Yeah, or? I do. Yeah, I do some commissions for um, uh, you know um, local businesses uh, and newspapers and stuff like that. But that doesn't yeah. bring that much. I I um, also um, a writer as well. Do freelance writing and stuff like that. So oh, okay, it's kind of you know I get small gigs here and there for for photography, yeah. writing, whatever. But you know it's sort of you know it's. You know, I get I make enough to, to keep going, and that's all I need at the moment. I'm not trying to like yeah. trying to get rich and famous or whatever. Get I just pay, pay pay the bills and get by. Exactly. I, yeah, I mean, if I'm and pay the bills, then I'm you know I'm, yeah. I'm doing what it's I want an, to do. It's an interesting thing because, like, for me, um, I mean, it's not a question you're asking me. I've sort of led you into that. It's just like, how do we fund this, and how do we get by in the modern world to produce this work? And that's always a difficult one as well. Because in the background, we've got to, you know, we've also got to be, you know, I, I, I had no links in London. I had no connections whatsoever. So I had to start earning some money, you know, just to pay the rent. That's always a consideration with social documentary because it's not like a well-funded sector. Yeah. But I think if you, if you produce quality bodies of work, one thing I would say is you never know where it will take you. When, when I decided to get a state out get it all scanned print it etc i i ended up with a solo exhibition at the new library of birmingham you know for a month yeah. and then that led to as i say multi-story being interested i sent them a book and they're based in the area where the estate is and they gave me a, you know a, a five figure commission to go back yeah so and I, none of this would have ever happened. It would all just been under my bed. And yeah. so, you know, sometimes I suppose a, a key message in documentary where it is quite tough sometimes is to keep faith, keep faith, because the work you do will resonate. It will have a purpose. It will take you somewhere. So, you know, there, there, there's some great moments when you produce your work, show it, and, you know, and the whole publishing a book experience, I, I'm... I had a couple of offers of um, publishers that are, are known names in the photography world, and I decided to self-publish just merely on the, um, I thought it'd be better for me financially. So that whole journey producing a book is exciting. Yeah, and, and so that work takes you through all these processes. And I would also, the collaboration you're talking about of Haifa sounds great. And, and that's another thing, keep those collaborations going. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a really exciting, time and it's just um yeah trying to keep on top of it all and kind of you know like you know not get too carried away with the possibilities because you know sometimes yeah. like, oh, this is amazing but yeah it's um making sure that um i'm trying to i'm trying to be very open-ended and very sort of not have too fixed an idea about what i want to do there but yeah. i'm trying to just keep my eye on the idea that I do want to come out of it with something cohesive, like a body yeah. that, of work that we ex exhibited or published in a book. And so it's just trying to balance that kind of like open-ended sense of experimentation, because obviously I've got lots of time there, um, yeah. with also like just trying to keep it at the back of my mind, like, you know, I want to create something that, that, like I said, fits together as a body of work at the end of it. Yeah. When... Um... When I decided to get a state out in 2015, one of the things I did do is I, I made I made a, a separate micro website of that work only. Right. Because I was doing a lot of work in the commercial environment. I'd, I'd sort of personally, for a period of years, I'd let go of my dream, so to speak, yeah. as an artist. Part of that reason was pure necessity. You know, I, I'm married. I've got, I'm bringing up a young family. I've got, I, you know, I've got bills to pay. So, um, but then it always, that always, as it does, it's 
difficult. It was a difficult situation mentally for me to think, oh, you know, great. I'm earning some money, but I sort of didn't let that go. So I got it all out and I produced a website. It, part of that was, so um, if anybody looked at it, they wouldn't see everything else I was doing. They, they, they'd judge it on the strength of that. Yeah. And that was quite useful. And I got some mentoring. I reached out. I, I you know, put my hands up and said, I appealed to different people to help me. Okay. And, and it's amazing where that takes you step to step. It's always a step to step process. And if you're dedicated and you put your energy and your time into that journey, it will take you somewhere positive. That's a really good. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. If you're in a place of change, like it says you are, or, or, or a peripheral place that's yeah. been sort of struggling a little bit with the with the la- the recent history of this country, then I think just subtly and effectively documenting that area in your style in the way you want to is really important. Yeah. There's not a lot of us doing it, and we're going through a very difficult time. been doing this body of work slowly but surely and now coming to a conclusion for 10 years called provision and i'm going the other way i've got no people in it whatsoever and it's color architecture of the post-war period and um, i'm trying to one of my guiding principles in the work is i'm trying to motivate the sense of awe that must have been prevalent in people when they first observed the architecture in the 60s or 50s, because it was something new had landed on the landscape. Yeah, right. And, and also that period, the post-war consensus was generally speaking, things being built and produced and that was for everybody, was for the nation as a whole. And so I'm trying to photograph to represent these buildings as they might've been seen as with a wow factor, isn't that wonderful? And to look at, Some people might say, well, they're just quite interesting, graphic, beautiful shots of elements of buildings. But again, and and that's enough. If they think that and they hang it on a wall, that's fine. But the the series is a bit deeper because it's my childhood memories. I was born into the welfare state, the post-war consensus. It it allowed me to grow with confidence. And I'm trying to portray this through it. And, and again, that's a, it's a different approach, but it comes from feelings and emotions about a sense of place and what they mean to us. And, so, I, and I think it's a strong, you've yeah. got that, you've got that as well. As, thank as thank you. Yeah. I think like, it's yeah. interesting to say that because I, a bit younger than you, obviously, and I was born into the tail end of that. I was born in 1979, yeah. so I grew up in the 80s and the 90s. And yes. That was when it all started falling apart and sort of being reversed yeah. and all the rest of it. And but you know, like I said, I grew up in uh, you know on a post-war council estate. I went to um, a 1960s comprehensive, like you said, that was you know a lot of it was demountable buildings that never got replaced and you know and stuff like that. And there was that yeah. sense of um, you know I was still getting the benefits of of that kind yeah. of stuff uh, just yeah. at the time that they were sort of starting to take it apart. But because it wasn't really an industrial area so we didn't have like the mine closures and stuff like that uh, you know in like they did in wales or yorkshire but also yeah when like it wasn't an area where people were suddenly getting rich like in essex or parts of london or whatever you know so we mm. it was just i mean the village i grew up in there was almost a sense that like it hadn't really changed much since my dad grew up there in the 1950s yeah it was, it was, it was sort of like it felt like it was sort of slightly yeah. out of time, but I, like, I hear you yeah, yeah. there's a guy called John Bowton, he writes about um, council housing. He did a book called Municipal Dreams is his. Yeah, I've got got a copy. He's a great guy, The Fall and Rise of Council Housing. That's a great read, not long. But we've got this shift from public space to private space. So generally, if there's any change or redevelopment, they're often handing over what was communal public space to private development, which is brings you know all a lot of problems with that and i'm sure bristol's going through a lot of changes although yeah yeah the city centre i was photographing one of the new developments down in the city centre and it was one of these ones where it's sort of combined offices and apartments but the kind of apartments that you know people can't afford i don't know who they're you know but um yeah. also fancy you know um it was an old industrial area that's been sort of redeveloped and they've used some of the original warehouses and stuff like that. Um, I was photographing around there and the security guard came out and said, oh, you can't take photographs here. And I was, you know, I'm not on the street. This is, this is public. Yeah. But no, this is actually private property. And yeah, it, it did feels you, like Did you continue to, 
just interesting. We, so you were photographing from a public space. Uh, well, it turned out that the thoroughfare I was on was actually owned by the by the developers. I thought it was a, yeah. a, like an alleyway that was you yes. know, like sort of like public land. But no, he, he said, no, this is. Yeah, Th this is a big problem that's crept into British society, like mm. many problems, like a drip yeah. drip. And we haven't noticed. Um, and there's somebody called Anna Minton. She did a book about eight years ago called Ground Control or 10 years ago. She's written about three books, I think, but she addresses this shift from public from public to private. Mm. And uh, it, it, uh, just a tip, uh, as a photographer going around, it's good to know, be absolutely aware of your rights and what is allowed and what isn't, how to deal with it. There's a whole genre on YouTube um, called auditors. And basically they're people who go around filming and they're, they're sort of quite provocative, but not in a, an explicit way, but they make a point of pub filming from a public space, anything they want. And yeah. invariably they're approached either by private security or the police and questioned. And the reason they're doing this is to have on film a interaction where this border between private public what you can do and what you can't do is discussed and, and outlined and they're very good at it because quite often the the security forces overstep their mark and abuse their powers mm. um, but it's quite important in terms of freedom in terms of photographers and filmmakers for us to to to, to document the country we live in so if, if you if you just look on youtube there's a guy called auditing britain AB auditing Britain. You know what um, social media is like. Sometimes you can spend yeah. hours <laughs> waste an evening looking at all this stuff. Absolutely, but yeah. it, it is quite fascinating, and I admire them doing what they're doing because you know we are living in a times where potential dangerous authoritarianism is coming into this country, and. Mm -hmm. It, if it continues, it won't be long before photographers are restricted more. The whole feeling of what you alluded to at the beginning, it's difficult because there's suspicion. It was mm. like that in 1990, but clearly it's grown, you know, it's become, yeah. yeah. But I think conversely, there is this odd thing that everybody now owns an iPhone or an Android phone yeah. where they've got the ability to take amazing quality film and footage of anything. So maybe it's come round a little bit and actually things being filmed and photographed, people are sort of used to. I yeah. think they're just worried about where they'd be used.